What's poppin' guys, and today I'd like to share with you all how I solved the Rubik's Cube officially in less than 30 moves. Now for context, I started practicing and actually getting into FMC around 2023, when competitions were slowly going back here in the Philippines. I was doing these in the hopes of getting an official result, since that's one of the events I was not able to do pre-pandemic. And so after enough practice and learning, I had been able to attain a PB of 29 moves. Now I got this at a time when I was learning insertions, because for my current skill set, I use block building, edge orientation, EO, NIS, so normal inverse scramble switching, and insertions, which is using commentators to cancel out moves and to solve remaining pieces. I was only then able to debut FMC in 2024 with few better meet at Diliman. I debuted with a 32 single, but the rest of the solves are just not as remarkable. So at that point, that single was actually pretty good for me, but I was hoping to at least get sub-30 uh, somewhere in the future. And that day, finally came. With Eminem Kalok on Cubing Fest 2024, I was able to break the sub-30 barrier officially and tie my PB with 29 moves. And now, let's get through the breakdown of my 29 move solution of, for an official FMC round. And so now we have the scramble as shown here below. And so with this normal scramble, I really could not exactly find anything so remarkable. So instead, I decided to instead switch to the inverse scramble where the rest of my solution actually comes from without switching to the normal or anything. And so after switching to the inverse scramble, I was greeted by this. So there aren't any like easily apparent blocks except for this one. So I noticed that the blue and red edge were here and this corner matches up to this edge with a B2 that pairs it up. Meanwhile, this sets up the blue to an easy insert, but not before putting down the red cross edge and finishing the block with a six move two by two by two. Then immediately from here, I noticed that the edge for the blue was placed because at first I was aiming for the block on white, but then I realized that since this was here, as well as this red and yellow pair with a blue cross in bottom or blue cross, I noticed that I can actually just do a D2 setup, L2, and a D2 to restore that. So it looks like that from over there and completes a 2x2x3 two by two by with additional 3 moves. So that amounts to 9. Then from here, I first plan to insert this orange edge. And as I did that, I realized that these two, pair, these two pieces connect to a 3-move insert. So that adds an additional 6 moves to a 15-move F12-1. Then from here, I could finish into a skeleton, perhaps, by inserting this edge and pairing up with this block. So that is a U prime F2 U. And that leaves us with a 3C, 1 TC case. So there's three corners to solve and one corner to twist. So I determined that this would require around two insertions. So I was just hoping to cancel as much moves as possible, especially given that this skeleton was done in around 19 moves. And I just uh, went into the insertions after this. Now, as for the use of insertions, I predominantly use skeleton switching or RNIS. So instead of using stickers to trace each target throughout the skeleton, I instead try to pick out a spot in the skeleton solution, which solves partially up to certain corners or edges unsolved. So for example, this spot where I found, where I decided to at least check the spot. So do all the moves after the spot, then execute the scramble. And apply all the moves that come before it. So F2, U prime, F2, D prime, F prime. There were two spots that I primarily checked. One was over here with um, a question mark 
so doing all the moves, so it gave me this skeleton. I was trying to look for insertion that would sew at least one corner and take out this twisted corner to be used in it, the ladder insertion and solving, finishing the rest with a 3C insertion. So from here, it did not look so promising because majority of the corners to solve were on the same face and the twisted one is not in the same face. So I decided not to pursue that spot. And so I, I instead decided to check the spot in between this F prime and D prime in the solution. And I actually found that on this orientation, I could actually insert this corner to here and interchange it with this twisted corner. So that was a D2, D prime, F, D, then reverse those. And that ended up solving the corner as well as taking the twisted corner out. What was most surprising about this insertion is that putting it in this spot actually ends up canceling four moves. So the D cancels with the D prime and the F prime cancels with the F. And so that takes a total off of four moves from the eight move insertion. And so that brought me to 3C in 23 moves. So in order to get a sub 30 or 29, I just needed to cancel at least two moves. So I tried checking many different spots. Some of them either canceled one move or and some of them canceled two. And many others checking through every other spot, I could not find any other cancellations. However, I figured out that there were, again, other spots that actually canceled up to two moves. So for example, we have this exclamation mark insertion. And so here, that leaves us with this easy CBO, which is D prime L prime U L D L prime U prime L. And that actually cancels two moves. Now with that all said and done, canceling those two moves only added six moves to the tw otherwise 23 move skeleton, leaving us at an optimal 29 moves. So the final solution would be F2, U prime, F2, U, D, F prime, D2, D prime, F, D, D2, D2, L prime, U, L, D, L prime, U prime, L prime, F, D2, L2, D2, B prime, U, F, D, R, B2. And that solves the Rubik's Cube in less than 30 moves, which is tying my current PB, so I'll also consider this PB, as well as the winning single in this competition as it took a best of one format. In fairness though, I actually found this solution within 30 minutes, and so I was in such shock and disbelief that I actually was able to get a solution like this in this time, especially to tie PB. I tried searching for more starts, but this is around the 45 to 50 minute mark, so after checking, I, and so with that, I decided to recheck all of the different insertion spots. And I really could not find anything that canceled any more moves. As after checking insertion finder, this was actually the optimal number of insertions and cancellations given this very skeleton. So normally nowadays, I don't really practice FMC that much, but I'm relatively satisfied with how I'm doing for the meantime. And in the future, I'll probably try learning DR, HTR, other more advanced techniques, and actually practice the this event. But honestly, once you get into it, FMC is an incredibly fun event where you can actually learn how to be creative, especially under time constraints. So I'm hoping that you guys will also find the joy in doing FMC, because if it weren't for other events, this would probably be one that I would enjoy heaps. And on one more note, there are only 13 people in the Philippines who have had a sub-30 official FMC single. And so, here is manifesting to more FFC comps here in the country. Thank you all guys for watching, and I'll see you in another competition, hopefully. So yeah, keep canceling moves guys.